I'm Dr. Mrinalini Sharma, a plastic surgeon practicing at Isteva Cosmetic Surgery Clinic at Saket. Today I'm going to be talking about gynecomastia, which is an increasingly common problem encountered in young men and boys. Gynecomastia, also known as male breast or male boobs, can be a source of significant physical and mental discomfort to the patient suffering from it. People who are afflicted by this condition tend to hide it by wearing loose-fitting clothes and might also abstain from activities like swimming which require them to expose their upper torso. It can cause a dent in the self-esteem of such individuals. However, the good news is a simple short procedure can take away this problem permanently and allow the person to gel back into his normal life. Today. We're going to be talking about the types of gynecomastia, what causes gynecomastia and also about who requires gynecomastia surgery and is considered an ideal candidate for the same. Gynecomastia can be of two types, a physiologic gynecomastia which is caused by hormonal imbalances and a non-physiologic gynecomastia. Physiological gynecomastia can be seen in newborn babies in people who are approaching puberty say around the age of 10 to 12 years and also in males over the age of 50 where the testosterone levels are on the decline. Across these age groups what leads to gynecomastia is an imbalance in the level of testosterone and estrogen. This kind of gynecomastia can resolve on its own or using certain medications for treatment in about two years of time. If however the condition does not resolve by two years, it might require a surgical correction at some point in life. The other kind of gynecomastia which is more common is a non-physiologic gynecomastia which can be caused by certain conditions like malnutrition, liver failure, kidney failure, intake of certain medications and also the use of anabolic steroids these days which are commonly used for bodybuilding. Coming to who requires surgery. A person who has excessive glandular tissue on the breast or suffers from enlarged lipal areola or a loose sagging skin in this area is a candidate who requires surgery for gynecomastia. Certain prerequisites before one undertakes this surgery is that the person should have an ideal body weight which is close to the desired level at his height and age. Again, he should be ideally a non-smoker because smoking can adversely affect the healing time of gynecomastia. The third factor which we have, we have to take into consideration is that he should not be on any such medication which can again cause an increase in the size of the gland, for example, anabolic steroids. The person should also understand that he has to abstain from certain heavy physical activities for a period of around 6 weeks to 2 months post the surgical procedure. How do we evaluate a person who has come in for a gynecomastia surgery? Gynecomastia is divided into grades depending upon the extent of enlargement of the breast and the associated skin. So we have a grade 1 gynecomastia which just presents with a puffy nipple and no excess skin, a grade 2 gynecomastia where there is a moderate enlargement in the breast and no excess skin, grade 3 where there is a moderate enlargement of the breast and excess skin or grade 4 which is the largest where there is a marked enlargement of both the breast tissue and also the presence of excess skin. Results will depend upon the extent of gynecomastia and also upon the age of the patient. So a younger patient who has a better skin elasticity will have a better chance as the, as, at the skin retracting completely more so in the cases of a grade 4 gynecomastia where both the gland and the skin are enlarged. Now we'll be discussing in detail about the surgical procedure and also the intended benefits of gynecomastia surgery. However, before that, I would like to inform our viewers we've made a video regarding the pre and the post precautions which are required before undertaking gynecomastia surgery. And for this, I would ask them to refer to our Facebook handle. Gynecomastia surgery was performed in the earlier days using a mastectomy which led to an unsightly scar along both sides of the chest. However, these days with advancement in techniques, we can give the patient the desired result without producing any visible scars whatsoever. The surgery usually involves a combination of lipolysis and excision of the gland so that the problem does not recur. 
It is a daycare procedure and usually takes about one to one and a half hours depending upon the size of the gland and also the amount of fat which needs to be removed. Incisions made for this surgery are not visible and are usually hidden in the areas around the armpits from which tiny cannulas are inserted to, to perform a liposuction of the unwanted fat. I would strongly recommend my patients to ask for glandular removal also which is done by an incision hidden near the areola or the black portion of the nipple and is never visible in the long term. This will ensure that the problem of glandular enlargement never recurs despite changes in hormonal levels which might occur in the later part of the patient's life. The recovery from the surgery is usually very smooth and the person can return to his normal activities within about 3-4 to four days depending upon the extent of the surgery and the work profile of the patient. However, certain physical activities which involve the upper body, for example weight training or weight lifting, are to be strictly avoided for a period of 6 weeks to 2 months depending upon the enlargement of the gland. Also, the patient should abstain from smoking and alcohol for a period of 1 week post-surgery. We also advise all our clients to wear compression garments which will help the newly contoured chest to stick properly to the underlying tissue and avoid contour deformities later on. The usual recommended period is about 6 weeks but if continued for a period of about 3 months, results are faster and the recovery is better. The benefits of this surgery are tremendous in terms of the psychological state of the patient. Many patients come to me and say that now I can happily go back to swimming and activities which I have abstained from due to the lack of self-confidence. Also, it leads to an improvement in posture as usually the patient pre has presented with a drooping posture in order to mask the defect in the chest contour. It also relieves any kind of back pain which might have been caused due to prolonged bad posture. The patient is also able to wear all the well-fitted clothes without feeling any social embarrassment. We have also created a separate video which covers the myths and facts pertaining to gynecomastia surgery which is exclusively available on IGTV. When a patient comes to me regarding a consult for gynecomastia, the first question the patient usually has is, will the problem recur even after surgery? The answer is no. In every patient of gynecomastia surgery, whether it is a pure gynecomastia where the gland is enlarged or a mixed type of gynecomastia where both the fatty tissue and the gland is enlarged, the ideal surgery involves a removal of the gland too. This ensures that subsequent hormonal alterations or intake of medications cannot again produce a glandular enlargement. The second common concern is how long will I need to take a break from my routine activities. Depending upon the extent of gynecomastia, most patients can return to their work by about 3 days to 1 week's time. However, the healing will vary depending upon the presence of excessive skin or a excessively large gland in which case the skin retraction and return of masculine contour takes a longer time. However, this usually does not prohibit the patient from performing his routine day-to-day -day activities. The only activities which need to be avoided are high intensity exercises which involve the upper part of the body for example weight training, push-ups, pull-ups which can lead to deformities in the immediate post-op period if done before healing is complete. The third common question is presence of visible scars. These days gynecomastia surgery is performed using a combination of liposuction and glandular excision. Liposuction involves the use of very tiny cannulas which leave hardly 2 to 3 mm marks in the invisible areas close to the armpits. So over time these tend to fade and become almost non-visible. The second scar will be the scar of glandular excision which is again usually in the dark part of the chest called the areola and fades away very well with time. So scars are never a problem long term in after a gynecomastia surgery. The third 
concern is the presence of complications. Yes, it's a surgery. If the surgery is not performed well or if the proper post-op precautions have not been taken care of, asymmetries can result. The patient can have pain for a certain duration, say one or two months. And also healing problems can occur if the patient is a smoker, in which case the healing is poor or is an alcoholic, in which case the bleeding is excessive. So I would recommend all my patients to listen to the surgeon carefully and take care of all the precautions which the doctor suggests in the post-op period, both in the immediate post-op and at least till two months post the procedure. If these precautions are taken care of, the results of gynecomastia surgery are highly satisfying and patients are really happy with the way they look after the procedure. Hope you found this video useful. We are continuously making new videos pertaining to various cosmetic surgery procedures. Please subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon for latest updates. If you have any further questions regarding gynecomastia, you can drop them in the comment section below.